Hello and welcome back to Real Seekers. I'm your host, Dale the Real Seeker. And today I have a special treat for you. So going back again to fan request, and um, we have our, our good friend, uh, Harry Stark, um, who gives his real name in this video, but he, he's done a video, a great video. Um, it's about half an hour long where he goes over the scientific evidence and proof that God exists, uh, you know, things like the fine tuning of the universe, intelligent design and biology, um, and the scientific evidence related to the beginning of the universe and that sort of thing. So he's compiled a great video. Um, he's been working on it for, for a couple months and that sort of thing. So today I finally get to post that up for you guys. And um, yeah, I'm not gonna do a review this time around. I just don't have time. Uh, plus, you know, it, it takes like an hour, two hours to do a review. Uh, of just a five minute clip so so this this thing i just want to play it for you guys i think that it's good as a standalone video so uh yeah uh enjoy his video he's done a lot of research into it and it it looks great so yeah uh, i'll be posting that for you guys next week um i'm gonna be posting up um i haven't decided so i'm doing a theo geeks episode so i might post either the theo geeks episode uh that i'm doing with david russell and that's supposed to be on there's a new archaeological finding that confirms joshua chapter 8 um at mount ebel um we're going to be talking about that or uh i've done a video the last of the fan review shows so the last is i've had muslim listeners chewy the coin others uh have recommended some great uh sources on from muslims um talking about islam and the evidence for and against um and one of the those sources was the Muslim metaphysician, and he does a video on why he became a Muslim. Unfortunately, again, the review took so long. I've got like over two and a half hours uh, just addressing his first point, so it, it, it becomes a lot. But nonetheless, I've got a video on Islam, kind of comparing and contrasting the Trinity versus the Islamic doctrine of Tawhid, which is their doctrine of asserting the oneness of Allah. And, uh, you know, so this is obviously the core issue. If you believe in the Trinity, you're committing the sin of shirk, you're going to hell, according to Islam. Vice versa, if you deny the deity of Jesus and the Holy Spirit, if you deny the Trinity um, explicitly, and as a real seeker, you've got all the evidence and you still deny it, you're going to hell. So the assert assertion of the doctrine of Tawhid uh, is a damnable offense for Christians. Um, so yeah, this is kind of, it's kind of an interesting take. You guys have heard my take on the Trinity before. I'm a, I like William Lane Craig's model of Trinity monotheism. That's a form of social Trinitarianism. Um, so I defend that in the first hour. But then uh, something new for you guys is that I take a look at the doctrine of Tawhid. And specifically, I, I look at um, the historical development of the concept and, and show that well, Muslims have this logical problem of the Trinity related to the problem of the one and the many in philosophy, but Muslims have the same problem with their radical doctrine of Tawhid um, in terms of the divine essence versus God's at Allah's attributes. And this was an issue in conflict throughout the history of Islam, uh, including the earliest days of Islam. And so I, I kind of look over some of the historical controversies that ar ar arose in Islam related to this issue and show well, actually Muslims are not that different from Christians trying to work out the Trinity. They had their own controversies. They have their own logical problems. And unlike the Christian who has a logically coherent solution, the, the modern day Sunni Muslim by definition has no solution. They just have to appeal to mystery. In other words, I see this. This is called the Asherite Compromise. You'll find out about that. But that's the position of modern-day Muslims, including the, the Muslim metaphysician. And this just is just an admission. Look, Tawhid is logically incoherent. Um, that's my argument. It, it's not something I'm, I'm researched fully and stuff like that. So I want to be fair and say I'm not giving... A, one of my scholarly things it's not like the hiddenness of god where i'm looking in detail at, at both sides and stuff like that um but i've done some research in, and provided that as the um as a review show so if i might post the islamic show first and then do the theo geeks other than that i'll stop talking and let's get straight into harry's great uh half an hour video here he did a great job researching this and put a lot of time effort and work into it so 
I hope you guys enjoy enjoy all of his hard work. Does natural science point to God? Some say no, and some say yes. In this presentation, we will outline the perspectives in natural science, the central findings from the 20th century, and the explanations of the findings. The perspectives will now be outlined. In natural science, there are two main perspectives, namely a theistic perspective and an atheistic materialistic perspective. Under the atheistic materialistic perspective, self-existent eternal matter and energy is what everything comes from. Matter and energy arrange themselves by unguided forces to produce the first cell and eventually intelligent beings that have a concept of God. Here, God is imaginary and a concept of the mind. Man created God under this perspective. Examples of atheist materialists include Karl Marx, Sigmund Freud, Karl Vogt, Ludwig Feuerbach, Friedrich Engels, and Jacob Moleschott, to name a few. Under the theistic perspective, a pre-existing conscious transcendent being with great power and intellect is what everything comes from. Here, God is real and a concept of reality. God created man under this perspective. Under the theistic perspective, God can be defined as a transcendent, uncaused, sentient being who is external of time and space. The theistic perspective includes deism and theism. Both accept God. The fathers of natural science accepted God in light of the evidence. The fathers of natural science had biblical assumptions, which informed their scientific endeavors. Their assumptions include the following. 1. They assumed nature had laws, and laws imply a lawgiver and a law sustainer, namely God. 2. They assumed nature was intelligible, like there is a book of scripture, there is a book of nature. If nature is intelligible, the human mind could comprehend the order in nature, since nature and the human mind were created by a rational intellect, namely God. Examples of those with a theistic worldview include Isaac Newton, Leonardo da Vinci, Carl Linnaeus, Michael Faraday, James Clerk Maxwell, and Freeman Dyson, to name a few. The central findings will now be outlined. The central findings from the 20th century include 1. The beginning of the universe, 2. The fine-tuning of parameters, and 3. Information in DNA. The evidence for the beginning of the universe includes the following. 1. The evidence of light-weighted elements from observational astronomy. This is empirical evidence. 2. The Doppler redshift from observational astronomy. This is empirical evidence. 3. The blue shift from observational astronomy. This is empirical evidence. 4. The cosmic background radiation from observational astronomy. This is empirical evidence. 5. The second law of the thermodynamics. 6. The equation of general relativity. 7. The equation of special relativity. 8. The Hawking-Penrose Singularity Theorem. 9. The bord guth villenkin Singularity Theorem. 10. The low initial entropy from observational astronomy. This is empirical evidence. 11. The quantum mechanical instabilities. The secular scholar Alexander Vilenkin said the following, quote, With the proof now in place, cosmologists can no longer hide behind the possibility of a past eternal universe. There is no escape. They have to face the problem of a cosmic beginning. End of quote. Fine-tuning refers to an ensemble of parameters that are improbably set to achieve some significant outcome or function. The evidence for the fine-tuning of parameters in the universe includes the anthropic constants. Anthropic constants are highly precise and interdependent environmental conditions that enable life to flourish. Examples of anthropic constants include the following. The oxygen level, which had to be just right. The atmospheric transparency, which had to be just right. The moon-earth gravitational interaction, which had to be just right. The carbon dioxide level, which had to be just right. The precise expansion of the universe, which had to be just right. The centrifugal force, which had to be just right, to name a few. There are many more. We apparently live in a Goldilocks universe, where the fundamental forces of physics have just the right strengths, the contingent properties of the universe have just the right characteristics, and the initial distribution of matter and energy at the beginning exhibited just the right configuration to make life possible. These facts, taken together, 
have become known as the fine-tuning problem for atheist materialists. If something is not fine-tuned, we should expect it to have a high range of appearing. If something is fine-tuned, we should expect it to have a low range of appearing. The world-famous physicist Stephen Hawking said the following, quote, If the overall density of the universe were changed by even 0.00001%, no stars or galaxies could be formed. End of quote. This is a very low range. Stephen Hawking said the following, quote, The value of these numbers seem to have been very finely adjusted to make possible the development of life. End of quote. The evidence for the information in DNA includes the discovery of DNA's double helix structure, its mechanisms for transmission, and its complex information storage system. The information needs an origin. This has become known as the problem of DNA information for atheist materialists. The secular scientist Francis Crick said the following, quote, Information means here the precise determination of sequence, either a basis in the nucleic acid or of amino acid residues in the protein, end of quote. On the internet, there is a counter-argument that DNA is not a code or program. This argument is complete nonsense. What is a program? A program is a sequence of coded instructions that can be inserted into a mechanism. Examples of programs include cooking recipes, lab protocols, and computer software, to name a few. DNA contains a set of instructions to make proteins. Therefore, DNA is a program. This is present in all science textbooks. To deny that DNA is a program is analogous to denying that the Earth is round. The secular scientist Francis Crick, who acquired the Nobel Prize for discovering the double helix structure of DNA, said the following, quote, This nucleotide sequence is a simple code for the amino acid sequence of a particular protein, end of quote. Even Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft, said that, quote, DNA is like a computer program, but far, far more advanced than any software ever created, end of quote. On the internet, there is a counter-argument that DNA does not carry information and that the genetic code is not a language. This argument is complete nonsense. The scholarly consensus is that DNA carries information and that the genetic code is a language. This is present in all science textbooks. The scientists Alberts et al. said the following, quote, The conversion of the information in mRNA represents a translation into another language. End of quote. The scientists Mukai et al. said the following, quote, The genetic code is the language used by cells to translate their genomes into proteins. End of quote. On the internet, there is a counter-argument that natural selection can account for the genetic code. This argument is complete nonsense. Natural selection can determine which genetic sequence remains in the gene pool. The genetic sequence is unique for each organism. Natural selection cannot account for the genetic code, which is universal for all organisms. There is no materialistic explanation that can account for the genetic code. One materialistic explanation was the panspermia hypothesis, but that explanation turned out to be inadequate. On the internet, there is a counter-argument that evolution can account for the genetic code. This argument is complete nonsense. The genetic code precedes evolution. Therefore, it is impossible for evolution to account for the genetic code. On the internet, there is a counter-argument that the Miller-Urey experiment can explain the information in DNA. This argument is completely false. The Miller-Urey experiment happened in an artificial environment with limited scope, which is not generalizable to the conditions at the beginning of the universe. The secular scientist Michael Denton said the following, quote, Considering the way the prebiotic soup is referred to, it comes as something of a shock to realize that there is absolutely no positive evidence for its existence. End of quote. On the internet, there is a counter-argument that the spontaneous generation theory can explain the information in DNA. The spontaneous generation theory was a materialistic theory that stated that living organic matter could emerge from non-living inorganic matter using a material cause. This argument is completely false. The spontaneous generation theory was disproven by Louis Pasteur in the 19th century using his swan neck flask experiment. The secular scientist Paul Davies said the following, quote, the spontaneous generation of life is a ludicrously improbable event. 
End of quote. On the internet, there is a counter-argument that the information in DNA can emerge randomly by chance eventually. This argument is completely false. Firstly, there is not enough time since time and resources are finite. To use an analogy, it would be like having a bunch of monkeys trying to write Shakespeare's sonnets in a submarine. Sooner or later, the oxygen will run out of the submarine and the monkeys will die before writing the sonnets and the monkeys will fail. It cannot happen randomly under these conditions. Secondly, the new generalized second law states that increased complexity of biological structures will never form randomly with the passage of time. Thirdly, there are limitations in the natural laws which prevent, for example, an element with 200 protons or a carbon isotope with 53 neutrons from appearing naturally by chance. In nature, chance interactions do not necessarily lead to unlimited outcomes. Another counter-argument is that nature has information ratchets. This argument is completely false. The initial information needed to make the selection always exceeds any possible gain in information. Natural information ratchets do not exist. The proposed explanation of the findings will now be outlined. The explanations of the findings include 1. The multiverse hypothesis 2. Quantum cosmology 3. The panspermia hypothesis and 4. The god hypothesis One explanation is the multiverse hypothesis which is a materialistic explanation. The multiverse hypothesis attempts to account for fine-tuning. The multiverse hypothesis states that multiple universes exist, where fine-tuning is the result of a cosmic lottery. If the multiverse hypothesis is false, fine-tuning needs a tuner that is external of time and space, since fine-tuning came into existence at or shortly after the beginning of the universe. A transcendent tuner, in other words, which is per definition God. If the multiverse hypothesis is true, underlying universe-generating mechanisms are required, where one is based string theory and one is based on inflationary cosmology. These mechanisms must themselves be finely tuned to produce other universes. This means the multiverse hypothesis ends up presupposing unexplained fine-tuning and cannot properly explain all fine-tuned parameters by itself. This means fine-tuning still needs a tuner, namely God, especially in the many worlds interpretation. Stephen Hawking said the following, quote, It would be very difficult to explain why the universe would have begun in just this way, except as the act of a god who intended to create beings like us. End of quote. Isaac Newton said the following, quote, The suns, planets, and comets could only proceed from an intelligent and powerful being. End of quote. Scientists who became convinced of God because of fine-tuning include the following. 1. Fred Hoyle, who was a secular scientist and a defender of the steady-state model. 2. Francis Collins, who was a secular scientist and was the leader of the Human Genome Project and was the director of the National Institutes of Health and was the president of the BioLogos Foundation. He eventually became a Christian as well in light of the historical evidence, among other reasons. 3. Richard Smalley, who was a secular scientist and acquired the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. He eventually became a Christian as well. 4. Brian Miller, who was a secular scientist. He eventually became a Christian as well. He is now a member of the organization called Discovery Institute. 5. Gunter Beckley, who was a secular paleontologist. The fine-tuning argument was part of a cumulative case which included the arguments from contingency, arguments from the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics, argument from intentionality, and argument from the hard problem of consciousness, among others. He eventually became a Christian as well, in light of the historical evidence. 6. Cy Gart, who was a secular scientist and was a third-generation Marxist with roots in the Soviet Union. Through scientific inquiry, he became a deistic agnostic. He later became a confessional Christian as well, where he is now a member of the Methodist Church, founded by John Wesley. On the internet, there is the counter-argument that fine-tuning can be accounted for entirely by chance, since highly improbable events happen by chance, such as drawing cards out of a deck. This argument is completely false. Fine-tuning has a high improbability and results in a complex orderly outcome, where there is special potentiality. Drawing cards out of a deck has no special potentiality. That is the difference. To use an analogy, 
Winning the jackpot and the lottery 15 times in a row consecutively can realistically only happen if someone has interfered with the system and cheated. Another counter-argument is called the weak anthropic principle, which states that since human beings are alive to observe the universe, the conditions are to be expected. This argument is completely false. While human beings alive to observe the universe is to be expected, the precise conditions necessary for life are extremely improbable and surprising. The precise conditions for life require an explanation, just like how a building on fire requires an explanation for the fire's presence. On the internet, there is the argument that the attempted theory of everything called M-theory will explain fine-tuning. This argument is completely false. The M-theory fails to predict the fine-tuning since it permits a large range and presupposes 11 dimensions. Another explanation is quantum cosmology, which is a materialistic explanation. Quantum cosmology attempts to account for the beginning of the universe, where it states that the beginning of the universe emerged using quantum mechanisms. If the quantum cosmological model is false, the beginning of the universe needs a cause according to the principles of causality that is external of time and space and energy, since time and space and energy only came into existence at the beginning, a transcendent cause to be precise, which is per definition God. If the quantum cosmological model is true, there is, in essence, a mathematical reality prior to the material universe, and math only exists in the realm of the mind. This means that prior to the material universe, there was a transcendent intelligent cause external of time and space and energy, which is per definition God. In a stroke of honesty, Alexander Vilenkin inquired the following, quote, The laws are expressed in the form of mathematical equations. If the medium of mathematics is the mind, does this mean that mind should predate the universe? End of quote. Scientists who became convinced of God due to the beginning of the universe include the following. 1. Albert Einstein, who acquired the Nobel Prize in Physics. Einstein said the following, quote, I am not an atheist, and I don't think I can call myself a pantheist. End of quote. Einstein also said the following, quote, The more I study science, the more I believe in God. End of quote. In his biography of Einstein, Walter Isaacson wrote about, quote, Einstein's belief in a deistic concept of God, end of quote. The astrophysicist Hugh Ross said the following, quote, I am grieved that no one ever offered Einstein the clear biblical resolution to the paradox he posed, and that Einstein did not live long enough to see the accumulation of scientific evidence for a personal, caring creator, end of quote. Two, Robert Jastrow who was a secular scientist and the director of NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies. Robert Jastrow said the following in reference to the cosmic beginning, quote, Astronomers now find that the world began abruptly in an act of creation. That there are what I or anyone would call supernatural forces at work is now, I think, a scientifically proven fact, end of quote. Robert Jastrow also said the following in reference to the cosmic beginning, quote, The scientist has scaled the mountain of ignorance and he is greeted by a band of theologians who have been sitting there for centuries. End of quote. 3. Alan Savage, who was a secular scientist and a prodigy of Edward Hubble. He eventually became a Christian after seeing how the beginning of the universe was predicted by the book of Genesis, among other reasons. 4. Hugh Ross, the astrophysicist who was secular as an adolescent. He eventually became a Christian after critically examining the major world religions. He is now the president of the organization called Reasons to Believe. 5. Sarah Selviander, who was a secular astrophysicist and was raised by socialist parents in a secular culture. She eventually became a Christian as well in light of the historical evidence, among other reasons. 6. Michael Egnor, who was a secular neurosurgeon. He eventually became a Christian as well. On the internet, there is a counter-argument that the laws of nature allow the universe to create itself. This argument is completely false. It is a philosophical misconception and a categorical error. The laws are descriptive, not prescriptive. Therefore, the laws cannot yield a cause. Another counter-argument is the oscillating universe model. This model has several problems. Firstly, there is no plausible mechanism to explain the successive re-expansions of the universe after the gravitational collapses the model expected. Secondly, 
the model encounters severe issues with the second law of thermodynamics. Thirdly, recent astronomical measurements suggest that the universe has a mass density that is lower than the so-called critical density necessary to stop the expansion of the universe, which means the universe will never recollapse. Fourthly, the expansion is accelerating. Another explanation is the panspermia hypothesis, which is a materialistic explanation. The panspermia hypothesis attempts to account for the information in DNA. The panspermia hypothesis states that a non-transcendent designer, namely a space alien, seeded the origin of biological information. If panspermia is false, a program needs a programmer that is transcendent since the information in DNA was present at the beginning of the universe. A transcendent being, in other words, namely God. If panspermia is true, a non-transcendent being, namely a space alien, seeded the origin of biological information. This space alien must consist of simpler organisms and be present at the beginning of the universe, which means the space alien needs an external cause to come into being. This external cause is, per definition, God. The scholar Antony Flew said the following, quote, Probably Darwin himself believed that life was miraculously breathed by God, end of quote. Flew also said the following, quote, Darwin himself pointed out that this whole argument began with a being which already possessed reproductive powers, end of quote. Scholars who became convinced of God because of the information in DNA include the following. 1. Antony Flew, who was the world's leading atheist philosopher. 2. Dean Kenyon, who was a secular scientist. He eventually became a Christian as well. He repudiated his own materialistic theory of biochemical predestination. 3. Richard Lumsden, who was a secular scientist and won the highest world award for parasitology. He eventually became a Christian as well. 4. John C. Sanford, who was a famous secular scientist and was the co-inventor of the gene gun, among other things. He eventually became a Christian as well. 5. Fazal Rana, who was a secular scientist. He eventually became a Christian as well. He is now a member of the organization called Reasons to Believe. 6. Salvador Cordova, who was an agnostic scientist and became famous after appearing on the cover of the prestigious scientific journal Nature. He eventually became a Christian in light of the historical evidence, among other reasons. Another explanation is the God Hypothesis. The God Hypothesis is a metaphysical explanation with empirical evidence. The God Hypothesis states that a single transcendent external intelligent cause exists. The God hypothesis attempts to account for the beginning of the universe, fine-tuning, and the information in DNA. Question. Can the arguments in favor of the God hypothesis be falsified theoretically? The answer is yes. The God hypothesis can be theoretically falsified through the following. 1. By having a high range or high probability of certain patterns appearing. 2. By having dependently matching patterns. 3 by having the outcomes of the matching patterns be predicted using mathematical equations. To name a few ways, there are more. We currently have the opposite of the above. On the internet, there is the counter-argument that the God hypothesis is an argument from ignorance, which is more popularly known as a God of the gaps argument. This argument is completely false. Let's say we have effect X and has a strong reason to think that cause Y cannot product that effect. If I immediately then infer that cause Z did it without offering any positive evidence that cause Z can produce effect X, then that will be an argument from ignorance. That is not what we are doing when we are making an evidential case for the God hypothesis. We have an effect such as digital information that we know from our uniform and repeated experience arises from a mind and we have reasons for thinking that consciousness has a higher epistemic probability of producing this particular kind of effect. And we also have good reasons for thinking that various materialistic explanations have a lower epistemic probability of producing that effect. Since we have reason for thinking that consciousness has a higher epistemic probability of producing that effect, then we can infer with confidence back to the type of cause as an explanation, as it is more probable. This is known as an inference to the best explanation. It is not an argument from ignorance since we are offering a positive warrant for the higher probability of that causal explanation. On the internet, there is this notion that natural science can only operate deductively. This is false. Natural science can employ abductive reasoning. 
Abductive reasoning is when someone reasons backwards from the observed effect to a cause, such as when determining the beginning of the universe. Can we empirically test the beginning of the universe itself? No, we cannot, since a beginning only happened once. The effects from the beginning of the universe are testable. For example, we can detect the Doppler redshift, which means the universe is expanding, which means it at one point must have had a beginning. This is abductive reasoning. To reiterate, a beginning needs a cause, tuning needs a tuner, and a program needs a programmer. These three findings gravitate more towards a theistic explanation than a materialistic explanation. Even if there would have been a valid materialistic theory, a such theory would have to be extremely ad hoc, convoluted, exotic, and esoteric, as opposed to the simpler postulation of a single transcendent intelligence in the Occam's razor sense. Therefore, the three findings are better explained by the theistic notion of a designing agent. The Nobel Prize winner in chemistry, Christian Anfinsen, said the following, quote, Only an idiot can be an atheist. We must admit that there exists an incomprehensible power of force with limitless foresight and knowledge, end of quote. In conclusion, natural science points to God. For real. Who was the author of this presentation? The author of this presentation was S.M. Sabbag. He is a professional molecular biologist where he has experience using CRISPR-Cas9, Western blot, and indirect ELISA to name a few procedures. His master's degree in bioscience and his bachelor's degree in bioscience are from a secular state university. He has work experience from a biorefinery, analyzing samples of using laboratory equipment. He has experience in bioinformatics, where he has analyzed next-generation sequencing data, among other things. He has experience in programming using the following languages, Perl, Python, HTML, C++, and C Sharp, to name a few. He has experience in using statistical programs, such as SPSS, Stata, and Minitab, to name a few. He has experience in forensic science, where he has analyzed DNA samples, among other things. He has experience using cartographic programs, such as ArcGIS and ArcMap. He has experience in environmental law. He has experience in environmental inventories and assessments. He acquired the first prize in an innovation competition among 539 contributions from 91 countries. For several years, he was an atheist materialist and an atheist existentialist.